All right, this video is going to be a little bit different. I've been asked a lot about Kim Clement. Uh, many out there put him at the top of the heap as far as being a true and authentic modern day prophet. And so I was asked to look into him. As I begin to do my research on Kim Clement, I came across this video right here. Now, this is from a channel called Eyes Like Fire Ministry. The host of this channel, his name is Stephen. And I watched this video and just simply could not believe uh, the detail that Stephen brings out here. I, I certainly would encourage you to go over to Stephen's channel, Eyes Like Fire Ministry, and subscribe because uh, he does a lot of wonderful Bible studies uh, in depth from the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, and he is sound in his theology. But I watched his video, and I came to the conclusion that I could do no better than what he's done in his video. I couldn't add anything to it, so I asked permission from him to share it, and he said, go ahead. And so what you're going to watch now is his video, which goes into great detail uh, with nothing but facts exposing Kim Clement as the false prophet that he was. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Stephen. And again, thank you to him for letting me share this. Another very lovely evening to all of you once again, my friends. We are going to be discussing today one of the most known of these modern false prophets. His name is Kim Clement. Kim Clement, I'm not going to give much backstory on Kim, but I will say that he and his wife had founded this online uh, church. Well, they, they call it an online church. It's called House of Destiny Network, and this is directly from... Um, his website now kim died back in 2016 he was famous for predicting donald trump would win the presidency uh that he would also be re-elected they also claimed that he predicted 9-11 he predicted um hurricane katrina in new orleans all these will come to right here in just a minute but i would like to point out what his own website says about him. Who was Kim Clement? Many have called him prophet, but to simply call him a prophet is not enough. Part of the journey to understanding Kim Clement is a lesson in understanding the uniqueness of his destiny. He was not a doom and gloom prophet. Listen to this. Kim was not a doom and gloom prophet with an apocalyptic forecast every three years. Instead, he was a voice of hope to those who needed it the most. He was able to paint a picture of destiny that inspires instead of frightens those who catch a glimpse. He found a way to define again what it is to be a true prophet, really. He, along with his wife Jane, was the founder of the House of Destiny Church. So Kim and all of his followers take pride in the fact that he's not a doom and gloom or biblical prophet. Far more accurate description is he's not a biblical prophet because in the Bible, the doom and gloom prophets were the prophets. That's what. That's why God sent prophets it was at a time of doom and gloom. John Baptist, even whenever they prophesied something good, they would prophesy repentance. You must repent. They would tell every one of their listeners Doom and gloom prophets. This is just a very, very few. Elijah, Samuel, Micaiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jonah, John Baptist. All of them doom and gloom. Who were the prosperity prophets? All the false prophets in the Bible. Kim was also lumped in with all these other false prophets. I, I've said this. It's like a broken record. Without Walls International Church and Pastor Paula White welcome Bishop T.D. Jakes and Prophet Kim Clement back to Tampa for the start of an explosive month of guests at WWIC. And right here's a little graphic showing all these false prophets together. 
Now, we can very easily just show one of his many false prophecies, many false prophecies by Kim Clement. He even admitted that he had uh, several false prophecies. Now, he wouldn't go as far as saying many, but with just researching him just a little bit, you find a lot. Kim Clement stated that God said by the year 2012, which was the year that this was made, all the without walls buildings... Paula White's buildings, properties, and projects would be paid off. Of course, that did not happen. Within two years, by the year 2012, there will be absolutely not an inclination of debt. Every building will be paid off, every property, every project. And God said an international door is open. Kim also had some really questionable views. Just real quick, I'm just going to state this. He had some very questionable views on uh, obtaining salvation. What did Kim believe about salvation? And here is one of his quotes. He says, I do not believe that you must be born again to obtain salvation. Kim Clement said that there's a treasure hidden inside of everybody, even the lost. There's something hidden inside of me. I want you to turn around and tell somebody, there's something hidden inside of you. You're going to see it tonight. There's, let me say, you may be saying, what are you talking about, something hidden inside of me? I believe that, that there's something hidden inside of you that God placed there at your birth. There's something hidden inside of you that Satan don't want you to see. Now, even though Kim had been prophesying for quite some time before 1996, it was in 1996 that his popularity really took off because he predicted the 9-11 attacks. It has been a terrorist act and will be another. But the Spirit of the Lord says America will retaliate. But God says even as they retaliate with natural weapons of war, and they say we will go to the place of the east and we will go and we will bring them down for what they did to our people as they flew in the air of a long island. But the Spirit of the Lord says another will take place and I will prevent many deaths because I will cause a security thing to happen so that they will not die. I will look after you, America. The God says the retaliation will not be right. It will not be of my spirit. It will be a wrong decision. But God says the saints of the Lord, of the Most High God, will begin to pray. And yet God says I will strike down the God of the East. I will bring something to pass very soon. I have told you about it. The very God of the East, the very King of... Now, many people are taken by that. I remember whenever I first seen that about a year or two ago, because I'm way behind on the Kim Clement stuff. He's been dead for a while before I ever even heard of the guy. But I was even taken aback by that. I said, oh, my goodness. you know." But if you do a little bit of a digging, just a little bit of research, and you'll find out that it was eight days before he made that prophecy that there was an actual TWA flight that exploded in midair, and everybody was thinking about this terrorist attack, and it happened right near Long Island. And so, I mean, he, this was very fresh on everyone's mind about these ter uh, terrorist attacks. Uh, just a day over a week old, and he's making this. Trans World Airlines Flight 800 was a Boeing 747 that exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean in, near, uh, in New York on July 17th, 1996, 12 minutes after takeoff. There were 230 casualties in that explosion, and still to this day, many reckon that it was a terrorist attack. Now, before we go any further, this is the perfect opportunity to state what apostasy, uh, apostasywatch.com said about Cam Clement. This is the most accurate description of Cam Clement that I could ever, I, I couldn't say it better myself. Cam Clement is no prophet. He, now this is back whenever he was alive. Cam Clement is no prophet. He is a keen observer of current events with the ability to tell people what they want to hear. The more specific he gets, the less accurate he becomes. Kim Clement is no different than any of us sitting on our couch watching the news. He would even reference like 
television shows during his prophecies, like The View. He'd mentioned the news. He talked about the White House all the time. He's <laughs> reminds me of just one of these guys that sat around and watched the news a lot, and he would just make predictions like we all do. The difference is that he had a spotlight, and yet he'd have music playing behind him, and it would be all this atmosphere built up. He'd have his eyes closed, and he'd say, Thus saith the Lord. That's the only difference. hes uh, I believe that he was self-deceived, very much so. But uh, it, he mentions in the video about a terrorist attack. Now, once again, I'm just going to hit on this. But by that time, July 1996, the U.S. had already experienced numerous terrorist attacks. The first World Trade Center bombing in 1993, the Oklahoma City bombing in 95, the bombing of the U.S. military headquarters in Saudi Arabia in 1995, the bombing of the U.S. military barracks in Saudi Arabia in 1996. So these terrorist attacks were happening all over. Kim says as part of that prophecy, he says, but the spirit of the Lord says another will take place, terrorist attack, but I will prevent many deaths, he says, but I, because I will cause a security thing to happen so they will not die, a security thing. That's real specific. Anyway, he says, so not many people will die in this next terrorist attack. Really? Well, after that prophecy was given, there was a terrorist attack, U.S. twin bombings at the U.S. Embassy in Kenya, and 224 people died. It's a suicide bomber attack in Yemen killed 17 American soldiers and wounded 39 others. And then let's go right to 9-11, which is what they say he was talking about. 3,000 deaths on that day. Once again, Apostasy Watch said this, In any act of terror or even in a natural disaster, it is always possible to say it could have been worse. So it is always possible to say that God prevented many deaths. This is not prophecy. It is a statement of the obvious. On top of all this, let's just examine what was left out of this prophecy. I mean, it, it seems really good and really on point, but there's really not many details at all given and i'll show just how inaccurate that it is right here in a second but there is no mention of three planes only one there is no mention of airplanes being flown into buildings there is no mention of the twin towers falling there is no mention of the pentagon there is no mention of the white house as an intended target on top of that his prophecy specifically says and he gets this wrong his prophecy specifically says as they flew in the air over long island not Manhattan, where the Twin Towers were, but Long Island. But did you know that none of the 9-11 hijacked planes ever actually flew over Long Island? Here's Long Island, right here. And right down here is Manhattan, where the Twin Towers are located. It's about an hour away. And this graph actually shows the uh, flight, pa uh, flight paths of the hijacked planes of the September 11th attacks. N no Long Island. The only terrorist attack that did at that time go around Long Island was the one that happened a, the, a week before that he saw on TV, and now he's trying to say that it was going to happen again. As he's just making this stuff up. But now let's watch the one that most people are starting to talk about Kim for, and that's he predicted Donald Trump back in 2014 and maybe even before that. But here's where he prophesies about Donald Trump two years before Donald Trump won the uh, presidency. This nation shall come very subtly, but he shall not come in the time of President Obama. They shall come when this new one arises, my David, that I have set aside for this nation. A man of prayer, a man of choice words, not a man who is verbose, who has verbosity, who speaks too much. They will even say, this man is not speaking enough. <laughs> I get a kick out of that because he says he's not ver uh, verbose. He has no verbosity to him. We'll come to that right here in a second. That means wordy. <laughs> and Kim Clement says this man will not be He'll not be very talkative. He'll choose his words. <laughs> well, if you know Donald Trump. Okay, but anyway, um, 
here's an article. All the times Donald Trump has pretended to run for president. Two, um, let's see, it was two years before that prophecy was given. Donald Trump was going to run against uh, President Barack Obama. Here's from The Guardian. Donald Trump bows out of 2012 U.S. presidential election race. He was going to wait until the next term. This was known to anyone in whom was paying attention to the news at that time and who was going to run against Obama. Trump was throwing his hat already in the ring, but he had done that before. About four or five times he kept talking over these last two decades. He's been talking about running, possibly running for president. It was a known thing Trump was going to be running. But... Clement, he he notes how Trump is so choosy with his words, and he's not a wordy person. Uh, New York Times, now I don't like New York Times, but they even noticed the they and all of the all of us can agree that he's the most talkative, boastful president ever. The verbose commander in chief, they call him. Here's a recent article just on New Year's Day. Donald Trump sent record 12,200 tweets in 2020. (laughs) Ends year with stock market boast. Another headline that's just like so many other. Trump is talking too much. But then Kim goes on and he says, they'll yell out impeach, impeach. Now, this is very moving. If you're watching it and you don't research Kim Clement or if you don't research any of the prior presidents to Donald Trump, then you'll notice that Kim, I'm telling you, 100% guaranteed Kim Clement is no prophet, not even kind of a prophet. He is zero prophet. The only thing that he does is he makes predictions on what he already knows built into his mind. He's watched TV a long time, probably watched TV all the time. But God says, I have set him aside. They will shout, impeach, impeach. But this shall not happen. Well, first of all, just to state the obvious, Trump was impeached in the House. Trump impeached for abuse of power and obstruction. But please, my friends, know that I looked up how many times that the Republican Party, how many times that they were trying to impeach Barack Obama. It is, it's unreal. The efforts to impeach Obama. They have done this to all the presidents. All the presidents, they always try to impeach them the other side. Here's just a few things they tried to impeach Obama for. Preventing Obama from pushing his own agenda. Obama administration, immigration policy, use of drones, Libya uh, intervention, Benghazi attack, the Obamacare. They tried to impeach him over and over. That's that's just the clip that I could fit here. And then in the president before Obama, the Democrats tried to impeach Bush just as much as they did Trump. Here's the list of those. Justification for invasion of Iraq. Legitimacy of invasion. They tried to impeach him for all these. Conduct of the Iraq war. Valerie Plame. Treatment of detainees. Attempt to overthrow the government of Iran. So they've always done these things. But here's another prophecy from Kim. He said, and I quote, two years from now. Now, this was in 2008. So he's talking about in 2010. Two years from now where they will hear the sounds of faith and unity, and within this next reign, there will be laws. Now, he's talking about Obama's uh, time. And within this next reign, there will be laws that will be changed in favor of the Most High God. Really? Like Obama would do something, laws, change laws in favor of the Most High? Not because of Democrat, not because of Republican, but because of spiritual unity and intervention. I will bring you out of what they call a recession into your highest economy that you've ever had in your next four years. There's a lot to unpack right here. So first he says that in 2010 there'd be laws changed by Obama in favor of God, and then there would be brought out of a recession, and the best economy ever would be in 2012. Well, first of all, let's address the 2010 one. Were there laws changed in favor of God? Well, we do know that Barack Obama passed the 2010 Act, which really benefited Planned Parenthood. Here's from Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood's statement on President Obama's 2010 budget. As the nation's leading advocate and provider of women's reproductive health care, every day we see that the best way to prevent unintended pregnancies and promote healthy families is to invest in family abortion. 
Women have access to affordable, quality, reproductive health care. The president's budget is a step in that direction. And Obama just got worse from there, as we all know. He legalized uh, same-sex marriage. And as far as the economy goes, in 2012, did it get the biggest that it's ever been? No. It was barely even above what it was in 2006, before the recession. The middle class income was even, that, that was at the lowest that it had ever been in 2012. More people were on food stamps, though, at that time than any other people. It's like the exact opposite of what Kim prophesied. Kim also said that Barack Obama would unify the people. He would bring about unity. He was big on that before he, then he corrected it later on. <laughs> but was Obama big on unity? Did the nation unite? He's actually ranked among the most divisive U.S. presidents ever by top political scientist CBS News. The nation's first African-American president, Barack Obama, is seen at a campaign event in 2012 as he sought a second term. Mr. Obama would handily defeat Mitt Romney in the general election, but political scientists consider him a polarizing president. The exact opposite of what Clement predicted. There's also this thing about Clement where he uses repetition a lot. One of the researchers said that whenever he went, it's almost like he tries to mind control people with these repetitive words. First of all, Jesus says, when you pray or talking to God, whenever you're doing anything, use not vain repetitions. Jesus was against these vain repetitions. God is against them as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But Kim, he would even admit that um, that, uh, that uh, his prophecies, some of them didn't come to pass. He would admit it. I want you to understand this is there's no classification of sin. Prophets of old were not stoned because they didn't predict something correctly. It's when they led the people of Israel astray. And you can read that in my book called Call Me Crazy, But I'm Hearing God. Because I speak about it and it's scriptural. Of course, we all make mistakes. And of course, we are under correction. And you know what our correction is? The Word of God and those that are around you. And I am accountable. But what about the words that are coming to pass? You'd rather call for the little things that you see that did not come to pass and may still come to pass. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. Now this is from a true prophet. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by itself. Now listen. That frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. God knows all the intentions of men like Kim Clement. He knows what their little false prophecies are going to be and make sure that they don't come to pass. But there are plenty of other ridiculous false prophecies from Kim Clement. One of them more notable, in January 2006, Clement prophesied about the rapper Eminem and horror fiction writer Stephen King. But the prophecy didn't come true. He said, this year, I will raise up Eminem to be a voice. Conversion shall come to his house. Eminem, this year I will touch Stephen King, and he will write for the kingdom of God. <laughs> I told my buddy after reading that, I said, he couldn't have picked two more wicked men on the earth no conversion whatsoever has happened with these men. Clement also claimed that Alzheimer's is being destroyed and the cure for AIDS has been discovered and is about to be released. Now, that was over, well, that was some about 15 years ago. His actual words were Alzheimer's is being destroyed. The cure for AIDS has already been discovered and about to be released, says the Lord. For in this time, that the young men and women rise up, they will begin something that will go on and on and on. There will be no end to this that I begin, this that I am speaking about as it started in Southern California. So again, you have been chosen to bring forth this great revival. What utter nonsense. But once again, uh, Kim Clement died 
at 60 years old in 2016. He suffered from a brain tumor for, I think it was about a year or so. And he wrote in his prayer journal, Clement believed he would live into his 90s. He died at 60. He believed and prophesied even that he would live in his 90s. He wrote in his prayer journal how he and his wife would grow old together and he would not die before November 25th, 2050. He died shortly after at 60 years old. But Kim's prophecies are now being spread out again because... He says that Donald Trump will get reelected. That's one of his predictions, that he would, have, he would have two terms. So I guess we're about to find out if he will. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms, a president that will pray. But Deuteronomy 18.22, this is the importance of getting every prophecy right. God says it. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, if it's a false prophecy, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. He only thinks that it's from the Lord because he's listening to his thoughts. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. What that means is don't take him serious. So if just one prophecy is proven wrong by any prophet, they are false prophets and were never prophets and are never going to be prophets. The reason being is this, it's a credibility issue. If the prophet is wrong once and the thing comes not to pass, then it's not just that it reflects bad on the prophet, that reflects bad on God. And God says, you'll know that I am God because I declare the end from the beginning. I will give you prophecies. I'll foretell the future. I have seen it and I'll prove it. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Kim Clement has given so many false prophecies. All you need is one now. But he's given so many that it is irrefutable. He never was a prophet. Not once. Pay no heed to him nor any any with him. Pay attention to the company that they keep. Paula White, T.D. Jakes, TVN, saying good things to the people instead of doom and gloom, which they, I, he apparently they boast about with him. Thank you all for listening. Go to all right, so I want to thank Stephen again for allowing me to share that. I think if you did make it all the way through, you can clearly see that uh, Kim Clement was no true prophet. But just like most of who you see today, um, well, not all of them, but Kim was of a more spectacular fashion. He liked to put on a show. He always had the music playing in the background for the most part. And uh, he would work the crowds up into a frenzy as he put on his act. But he was no prophet. And so I appreciate Stephen obviously showing uh, scripture and then confirming uh, I think what at least for those who are truly seeking Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity through his written word uh, we can very clearly see um, the shenanigans and that's what they are I don't know what it is with people that so desperately want to cling on to these men and these women and just uh, you know have themselves have themselves uh, these prophets because all you need is the holy word of god almighty and so with that i'll uh, close this down and um, stand in the truth of jesus christ and serve him uh, with sincerity thank you so much